This is Magic the Gathering Deck Builder on Magic Gathering Strat, and I'm your host, DB. Alright, so the deck I've got for y'all today is called Naya Dragons. It's an offshoot of the Naya Dragon deck that I called Frontier Siege. Before we get started, I want to apologize for the late upload. I know this is supposed to be the Monday video, but I've had a lot going on and haven't got a chance to record it yet. I will be shortly uploading the Tuesday video right after this one. That way we can get back on schedule. So without further ado, here is Naya Dragons. To begin, we start off with Sylvan Carried It. As we said before, we need our ramp to get up to the amounts of mana that it required for this deck. So we're going to run four Carried It's, and we're going to stick with what we were running previously, which is Rattleclaw Mystic as a two of. The next card up is Corsair of Cruffix. I tested this a little bit without Corsair, but he's really necessary in the beginning of the game and the hand advantage you gain from him is too good to pass up so we're going to run him with four of as well next up we have frontier siege as we said before we're trying to get up to a ton of mana so frontier siege will also help with that we're going to run that as a four of and then move on to commune with the gods this card is great for pulling out coursers and frontier sieges in the early game it can also pull into our ramp if we just don't get any ramp and so we're going to run four of those. Another great thing about Commune with the Gods is you can combine that with our next card, Banishing Light, to be able to dig into your removal. So we're going to run four Banishing Lights with it. Next up, we have Savage Punch. Without the Corsair, it's really tough to run Savage Punch. But with it, we can go ahead and run Savage Punch as a four of in order to have some early game removal too. And after that, we have Valorous Stance. Valor's Stance is great for removal and for protection, so we're going to go ahead and run that as a 4 of as well. Finally, we get to our Dragons, and the first one we want to talk about is Dromoka the Eternal. This guy can come out by turn 4 in this deck, and if you can get him online with some Valor's Stances and Savage Punches in your hand, it's nearly impossible for your opponent to take back the lead. So we're going to run him, along with a Tarka World Render, harder to get to, but even more powerful than Dramoka is. It's worth it as a 1 of, and then we can afford to run Dramoka as a 2 of. Next up we have Stormbreath Dragon. Stormbreath Dragon is going to be really great in this deck, especially against those faster low to the ground decks when you need to have something that can come out quickly. It's also going to be good against control decks that are running things like Banishing Lights and Valorous Stances and such. So we're going to run that with Sarkon. Sarkon, like we said before, is not a dragon, but he turns into one and gets ridiculous. When he turns back into a planeswalker, any plus one plus one counters on him should stick around, which means he's just going to continue to get bigger like all the other creatures in your deck. So we're going to run both of those as a two of, and now we're going to move on to the mana base. We're going to run Windswept Heath and Wooded Foothills, and we're going to go ahead and run those both as a four of. Next up, we're going to run Temple of Plenty and Temple of Abandon. In the previous version of this deck, I wasn't running any Scrylands. However, after a little bit of testing, I've found that you aren't really doing anything else with your first turn, and so Scrying is a great way to go. So we're going to run four of each of those. And finally, we're going to move on to our basic lands, which, as you can see here, are three forests, two plains, and two mountains. Now that the channel has become more about turning a deck into a competitive design, we're going to talk about the sideboard. At the moment, my options for the sideboard include a few dragons with some removal and a few other utility cards, so let's get started. First, we have Ward Scale Dragon and Destructor Dragon. These two are a little expensive on the mana side, being six costs. However, they're really powerful in certain matchups. Ward Scale Dragon is going to shut off your opponent's combat tricks, which can be great if you're running against a burn deck or something like that. Being able to shut off their ability to activate prowess mid-combat is an awesome way to go. On top of that, we have Destructor Dragon. Against certain decks that use a lot of Planeswalkers, or perhaps in the mirror match, we want to be able to pull him in in order to keep their non-creature permanents under control. So we're going to go ahead and run two of each of those. And lastly, we're going to run a single Stormbreath Dragon. As I was saying before, against faster matchups, he's really powerful. Being able to play him on turn four against decks that are going to have you at ten or less life by that time, is really good and the fact that he has haste can help a lot in certain matchups. Next we have End Hostilities and Anger of the Gods. The number that you run of these is really dependent on your meta. At the moment I'm going to go ahead and run two of each 
It may change depending on my matches. Honestly, the fact that most of my creatures have four or more toughness means I may in the future end up going with more Anger of the Gods because it will not remove as many creatures on your opponent's side, but it won't remove hardly any of yours besides your mana generators. Next, we have Feed the Clan. I feel like against those burn matchups, Feed the Clan is going to be really powerful. Against Mono Red Aggro, if you can survive to the point where you have a ferocious creature on the board, Feed the Clan is going to turn the game around for you. So we're going to go ahead and run three of him. And then we have Abzan Advantage is the last card. And obviously we're going to run three of those. Abzan Advantage may turn into a races. Being a two cost might make it a little rough. We'll see how it goes in playtesting. But for now, that is our 75. As you can see, I've done quite a bit of tuning on the deck. I still don't think it's at the level where it would be competitive. But it is much stronger than it was in its concept. Hopefully in the future we can turn this deck into a very powerful deck. We've got a whole week to do it. So tell me what you think in the comments. What should we add? What should we remove? What should we change? Uh, as I said, in a few hours I will be uploading another video where I'll talk about some of the matchups I've had and how I think we could change it. I'll also be looking forward to you guys' comments to see what you guys think about changes that could be made, cards that could be added, etc. Anyway, thanks for watching. Give me a like if you liked it. Subscribe if you really liked it. I'd love to get some more people involved in our little community here. As always, I'm DB, signing off.